Hello, I'm Rahul from the Fun Robotics Network, and here with me is none other than Team Go2D2 from Romania. They're year in and year out, they're one of the strongest teams in the world, and currently hold the number one OPR in the world, winning Alliance Captain at the Michiana Premier Event, and their robot just has so much to learn from. Featuring their super fast active intake, their outtake that goes for both samples and specimens, their hanging with pivots off the ground, I can't wait to learn more on Behind the Bar. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. Hello team, Road to D2. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank now, you. let's just start with asking about, I know you guys are, in at least in quals, you guys did samples and specimens a lot, and you're one of the best at both. What makes you guys so good at both samples and specimens, and why do you guys choose to be to be more good at both rather than dual dueling and, or specializing yeah. in just one? So uh, it wasn't one of our requirements to be able to score both because we knew that some alliances would like to score samples and some alliances would like to score specimens. And in order to do that, uh, when we were designing the robot, we made sure that our robot can do both. And then after we've built it, we've decided that we need to practice both in order to assure that we are be good but or at least decent with uh, a partner that we'd like to play the uh, other type of sport. Nice. Okay, now the next thing I really want to get into is your drivetrain. I think yeah. you guys have one of the most compact robots and that really helps you like align, uh, speed around the field, get past other robots. Why don't we flip over your drive and talk about sure. your general drivetrain and how you're able to get it so small and what the exact dimensions are. Yeah, so uh, it's about 340 millimeter strength and uh, 316 wide. And uh, we chose these dimensions because we wanted to implement the longest extension possible while uh, remaining uh, in the regulations. And that's why we made our drive chain shorter. And uh, the designing process of putting everything together was a little bit complicated because we have to decide if these components fit best the world and how to optimize our center of gravity and the distribution of weight around the robot. But uh, we eventually uh, came up with uh, this association and uh, we are very proud of it. We think it works very well and we have very little balance when it comes to scoring samples and we have our lift. Uh, lift. Nice. Now let's just move on to your uh, intake. I think it's really small, but it's super effective. Why don't you walk me through your counter roller, your intake design, yep. what speed you're running at, and if you could run it with the controllers too, that would be nice. So uh, this is our intake. We run on our intake and as well as on our uh, extender motors and outing motors. We use very uh, big motors, which are 6,000 RPMs. And in order to do our ratios, we use the ZT2 bags, which are very efficient for high torque and high RPMs. And we have these very tiny pulleys right here that allow us to do whatever ratios you want. And right now, uh, on the shaft, we have around 1,300 RPM on the intake. And uh, after this ZT2 bag, we have this transmission of HDD3 that goes to the header. And below the intake, we have an uh, inverted round belt, which uh, engages the counter roller. And this counter roller is uh, custom made. We uh, put silicone in a mold, and that's how we made it. Nice and uh, also, in order to automize our transfer and detection of samples, in the intake, we have a distance sensor and a color sensor in disguise. Nice. Now, that's really cool. Now, just uh, touching on a couple of things. Why did you guys choose to go for a custom counter roller? Do you have any iterations, past signs, and what feedback uh, do you have yeah. the teams trying to do something In similar? the beginning, we used uh, silicon tube, just like this one, but with a different diameter. But uh, we discovered that we can try uh, many more uh, duties of uh, silicone. And uh, with that, we were able to try and add texture to it, and it worked better for us uh, after we did that. Nice. Now, especially on your horizontal side, why don't we see, I think there's so much amazing packaging in the back. Can we see where those motors are mounted yeah. and uh, how that's powered and all? So uh, the horizontal extension is powered by this motor right here below that has a transmission to this uh, pulley right here. 
and then we've engaged you to this crew that is based here. And we've also found his rotation with your Ravery from Ravery Potter. Nice. Now let's move on to your transfer and your outtake. I think you have a really light outtake size with that uh, rail-based deposit. Why don't you just walk me into how that all works, your whole deposit system? Yeah, so uh, the transfer we just done, it's fully automated. Uh, that's why we have a color sensor, as uh, my partner said. Um, so when we collect from the submersible, we check the color of the uh, sample. We also check if it's in the intake with the digital distance sensor. And then the horizontal extension retracts itself fully automated. And then uh, if it's a yellow sample, the um, outtake goes to take the sample. Uh, using this uh, extension, outtake extension, and uh, if it's a color, a red or a color, depends on the alliance, uh, we can uh, just uh, transfer it uh, manually because we can. Um, uh, it's very useful for uh, uh, scoring specimens uh, because when we um, uh, play on the specimen side, we want to collect all the samples from the submersible and uh, then uh, go to the Schumann player to. Uh, give them the samples and we do that only with our intake because it's much more faster uh, you, uh, instead of using our outing and uh, if we uh, collect the, uh, the opponent's uh, color uh, the horizontal extension just doesn't uh, retract. Nice. Now, just talking about a couple of things. Uh, on your rail, I see you guys have counters from it. And just in general, why did you go to for this extending microservice for specimens? How does it help you this year? Yeah, so uh, we have here a degree of freedom. Freedom is a passive, so we don't have another servo uh, using it. And uh, it's very useful when we want to score specimens, especially in the autonomous period, because we have uh, much more uh, faster trajectories. Instead of uh, uh, diagonal uh, strafe, uh, trajectory we have a uh, horizontally um, project so when we want to score specimens uh, the outtake uh, just extends like that and uh, we can just go um, on diagonally on the chamber because we want to affect the specimens we also have this claw that uh, can uh, collect specimen from the clip because on the nationals we had a problem because we took it from the sample not from the clips and uh, we had the risk of uh, unclipping the specimens uh, when we want to score on the chamber so uh, we just wanted to uh, be sure that uh, it won't be a problem anymore nice now can we also see where the extension motors for these vertical slides are powered and how the entire system is packaged back here. Yeah. Uh, the the outtake motors are right here. There are two bare motors and we have a transmission that goes to around uh, 1,200 HRPM. Yeah. Nice. Now, another thing on the back of the robot, I see you guys have these uh, sprung arms. How do you use them? Uh, yeah. There are our uh, guys for collecting specimens from the walls and uh, we use them as this. We uh, put the forward in this uh, back position and they help us uh, align to the specimen or are collecting them. And did you always have them sprung from the start or were they passive and you later made them sprung? Uh, yeah, them we uh, did them from the start because we knew that uh, when hanging this would be a problem because they wouldn't allow us to pass the bar and that's why they uh, we made them detectable in order to uh, Come back when we are reaching for the second bar. Now let's just get into your hang. I think it's really cool how you guys are able to pivot off the ground and able to hang. Let's go everything from that pivot off the ground to the PTO to your to your hooks. Let's just break down the system. Yeah. Uh, so we have this. Uh, we call it a Zach actually, and we use two action marks uh, maxes mounted in the drive strings that uh, action. Uh, this jack using an over center green piece because we want it to protect the servos and lock it in a position where it won't move and won't use power and that's why we did it over center and after the robot is treated we engage our video system which uh, is swing loaded we have a servo that uh, keeps uh, the couples locked and then we enable it uh, them being swing loaded they just engage and connect to the rear drive and motors and that's how we hang with four motors having enough torque to do that and then we just uh, with our outtake grab on the first bar then we retract use these passive hooks in order to lock ourselves to the bar and then we reach to the second and do the same thing nice now just a couple things on the hang did you guys have this uh, pivot system from the start of the season or how is uh, it developed no. throughout the so year? Uh, this is actually our second robot that we've developed this season and for the first one we wanted to uh, focus on the intake and outtake system and we canceled the making of an uh, hang 
And eventually when we reached that point, when we were happy with our intake and outtake and we wanted to implement the hang, we decided that we couldn't adapt that robot in order to do the hang, so we did this second one. Okay, nice. Now, uh, on, the ch on terms of just overall how your robot works together, there's so many moving parts here. Uh, how do you guys use software to like sort of tie this all together? I know you guys talked about current sensing, how, how, and what other sensors do you guys have on your robot? Well, apart from the sensor from the intake system, we have a distance sensor over here to see when we when we are close to the specimen, so we can grab them automatically. We use a uh, pinpoint which to go, mid, uh, to go build our odometry uh, models to track uh, the position uh, of the robot. And we also have a Lima camera to detect the uh, samples from the submersible for, for the autonomous period. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, just one last thing I think we haven't touched on is I see you guys have countless one of your slides with bungee cord. Why don't you talk to me how that works in your general slide inserts? I see they're aluminum. Or how has uh, that helped no. or polycarbonate? How has that been for you guys this year? Um, so the inserts are polycarbonate. Uh, they were very good for the whole season. We didn't have any problems with them. Uh, but uh, instead of uh, the caps, the holding caps uh, are made out of aluminium because they were broken a lot. So we decided to remove that problem and uh, do it with aluminium uh, metal. I think it's a 1.5 millimeters thickness. And this is a bungee cord. It's uh, cascading and uh, it helps uh, for uh, the weight of the outtake. When we want to leave the outtake, uh, the weight uh, just um, is it's much more easier with bungee cord. So. Uh, uh, it helps the two motors to lift up in uh, 0.7 seconds mm -hmm. and um, we have on both sides on uh, the front and also in the back for uh, equally balancing the uh, Audi. We nice. also have uh, when we want to hang uh, these um, spring locks uh, because we do had a problem last season when we wanted to hang uh, our springs were pulled uh, very very hard and they broke so we implemented this um, uh, lock system uh, in order to uh, uh, not damage the springs anymore all right thank you so much bro i think you guys have an amazing season number one ranked opr winning the michiana as the winning alliance captain thank you so much for being here today catch me next time on behind the bar thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information.